What up guys, it's Nate Perkins here. Thank you so much for tuning into MDG Media's production of the Swedish Open. We've got an exciting final round ahead for you guys. But before, we wanted to announce a huge giveaway. Clash Discs and myself and MDG are giving away a brand new Clash Disc Off backpack full of Clash Discs and the 2023 Tour Series lineup. To be eligible for this giveaway, all you have to do is three simple things. You have to subscribe to MDG Media on YouTube, Clash Discs on YouTube, and Perks of Disc Off on YouTube, and you will be eligible to win this brand new Clash Disc Off backpack full of discs. Thanks guys, enjoy the Swedish Open. everyone welcome to the conclusion of euro tour stop number four the swedish open we are in bora sweden south central part of the country at the umer gardens disc off center i'm stoked to be on this mdg media production i am your host nate perkins and i'm here with elias lukanen elias we have a macbeth antila battle on our hands Yep, we have seen the same battle before in Konopiste Open that time, Niklas Antila coming out on top. This time Niklas with a pretty shaky start for his standards, only one under through the front nine, compared to Paul six under. So Niklas really has to push the pace on the back nine to make up for those two lost, or actually um, five lost strokes, but only two back of the lead now. Certainly gonna be a very, very exciting Back nine here. Right, hole 10. Another really short par four. It's kind of the theme out here at Umer Garden. It's uh, short and technical. We're gonna see quite a few technical shots here on the back. You really don't need to bite off a lot of distance off the tee here. You just wanna hit the gap. You do have some OB that kind of creeps into this fairway and then wraps around this pin. It's maybe six meters long and right here. Yeah, all about the drive on this hole. If you get your drive into the prime position, about 90 meters off the tee, straight, then you have a pretty simple shot to the basket. Pull with a mid-range here. The line looks absolutely perfect. And uh, couldn't be much better than that. It's only 55, 60 meters to the basket from there. Oh, just a hair inside for Nicholas, but he squeaks by that last tree. Yeah, that's a big, big um, difference between hitting that last tree and going inside. Now he has a relatively easy chance for birdie compared to if he hit it. It would be a very difficult one. As we see Bradley throwing a beautiful line. I believe going with a putter there. Just a very smooth thrower, as we saw on the front nine. Very good with angles and... Uh, Seems like his disc always lands soft. Yeah. He knows how to land him, that's for sure. And Dennis just barely inside there. Tough angle here. He's going hyzer, but he needs it to flip up and ride straight for a little bit. All right, well thrown just outside the circle. Yeah, and got over that OB area, which is most important. You don't want to get any extra strokes from there. As it's pretty easy to avoid, the OB is really not coming into play, unless you hit some trees. Bradley there, going through the backside, back door, on the right side of the green, and he's putting. Mm. 
Little Luna turnover there for Paul. Needs to check up and gets a little tree love right there that could have potentially skated long. Yeah, that was a lot of speed. I don't think I'm lying if I said that that disc was certainly challenging the long side OB. As Niklas throws a beautiful forehand approach with the tactic. He's really confident and accurate with that disc and you can see why. Yeah, it just flashes right in front of the chains. Let's go, Dennis. Oh, that is too good. All wrist there from maybe 14 meters. Yeah, that certainly looked way shorter than the 14 meters with his putting ability. Probably was 14 though. Bradley also with a great putt. We might have a chance for a star frame on the first hole of the back nine. Let's see if Paul can put this in from just five meters. Of course he can. Niklas gonna go with the patented Nick and Osto. Rarely ever do you see Niklas missing with this pitch putt style. Although we did see that on the front nine. Yeah, two misses actually this weekend from close 14 yesterday and then six today. Headed into hole 11. For the right hand backhand, you're throwing this steep 45 degree turnover. You have to feed it through one gap here that the drone is about to fly through. You need it to be flying considerably higher than the drone is right now. Ideally, you'd get something that kind of either gets back to flat toward the pin or just hits the backstop behind the pin and kind of cuts out just a bit. The forehand is trying to fly through the same gap. It's really easy to push this one too long or cut it too tight. Yeah, exactly. Looking at Paul here, you can see he's already putting that Anheuser angle even with a slightly understable disc there. And actually gets a bad kick at the end. That was a very good angle. He was about to be in circle one, but kicked to circle two there. This hole, even though it's a, it's a tricky angle, the players have really seemed to have figured it out as it's the second easiest hole of this final round, playing almost 0.4 strokes below par. Niklas, definitely one of the players that has figured this hole out. He has thrown three rounds and three pretty much ideal shots on this hole. That looks a little wide, but it is just going to cruise on through the gap. What a beautiful turnover right there, man. Yeah, Bradley threw it so soft that even though it looks very wide out of the hand, it actually had time to come to the right. Great touch there. Dennis also pushing the long side just barely too much. That's a common mistake here, but it's very runnable putt from here. Or actually, it looks like he's going with the forehand. I believe trying to run this in. Yeah, there's a little backstop here on 11. And Macbeth, after hitting a late tree, he's just outside the circle here. He was putting extremely well on the front nine. Not quite continuing that. Barely misses it to the right. And that's going to be a stroke for Niklas. Cutting that lead down to one stroke. The game is getting tighter. As we saw Bradley tapping in for the birdie. Dennis for the par. And look at this. Niklas throughout three rounds has had combined less than 10 meters of putting on this hole really tells something about high dialed, how dialed in he is with that yellow sensei that he's throwing. Okay, hole 12, another soft par 4 here, just 161 meters. The first 110 meters is kind of dead straight. A few trees to miss, 
but the gap is pretty wide considering the distance. It gets a little more technical as we approach the green. There's kind of one gap to hit, maybe six meters across here. It's a bit of a staggered gap, but this is certainly a hole where a four feels like a bogey. Yeah, it is the easiest playing hole on the course, playing almost half a stroke below par. And that's for the whole field. These top players would probably push the average down to closer to three than four. Niklas here going with that understable PD, am I correct? Yes, I believe that is his PD. And Oh, and it was a little too flippy, gets a kick back out into the fairway. That might have helped him. Yep, right side. If you go early right, you're in deep trouble, at least as far as getting the birdie. Anything on the fairway and slightly left is okay. For example, Bradley here, just fading slightly on the left side of the fairway. Even though he's on the edge of the bushes, that's really pretty simple approach. Only about 55 meters to the basket. Paul hyzering out a bit. Might be okay in there. Depending on how much he pushed into those trees. Dennis trying to flick, flip something up, but throws it a bit too nose up, a bit too high there. Fading into the right side of woods, and that's really a coin toss whether he has looked at the basket or not. And you can see the rain starting to come down. From time to time during during this round, it was heavy rain, and uh, certainly one of those times right now, as we saw a good approach from Bradley. And then is also able to craft something all the way through the woods. He's inside the circle there. Yeah, and a crafty little hyzer there from Nikke. Dennis, downhill, nine meters. Pink, another one. As we mentioned in the round two, he's a... Uh, Quick, spinny, snappy putting motion comes from him being a former table tennis player and his putting motion being very similar to that table tennis backhand loop stroke. So good, good muscle memory utilization there. As we see everybody on the card guarding the easy birdie on this hole. Got to give a shout out to the Danish champ Yalte Henson for carding. Yeah, Yalte carded the Eagle too from just six meters. All the way into the circle there it was a phenomenal shot that I got to watch in person. Here we are, hole 13, probably one of the more demanding hyzers on the course. One specific way to get inside the circle. Very easy to throw it too tight. Also, most common result is pushing it too straight, I would say. Yeah, many people are scared of the early left side woods and for good reason. They're super thick if you go early left. You almost have an instant bogey from there. Everybody on the card looking forward to just missing the middle tree on the left side with some heavy hyzer and some good height. Just early? I couldn't quite see. It must have must have been early. Yeah, look just a touch early. You have to you have to 
play tight if you want to get all the way to the basket, but that was just a little bit too tight there. Let's see if Bradley can can fix that mistake. Looks like he does, but this is pushing too far straight. That's the other common result, as you see, already battling with the far side trees. It's a really specific angle, um, angle as we said. That's also pushing that straight side, but Heiser's just in front of the final trees and he'll have a circle's edge look. Yeah, that's a good result on this hole. Not many times you see people inside the circle. And Dennis with the forehand here. Line looks really nice as long as it fades aggressively to the left right now. As it does, a little bit short there. Obviously it takes a big forehand to reach this hole, but within his putting distance for sure. Wow, he was deep in there and well thrown to get himself to the bullseye's edge. Yeah, Niklas really fighting after that tough front nine. Already has three birdies in a row. and Looks like he's going to have a great par save there. Bradley running it from 35 meters. You can see that floaty touch that he has on those putter shots. Just beautiful. Great bid there from Dennis. Just gets that band. Wow, Paul Macbeth, lone birdie. He moves another stroke ahead. He's now two in front with just five to play. The rain continues to pour down here at the Umer Garden Disc Golf Center. Man, disc golf is so hard to play in the rain, Elias. Yeah, just uh, just the grip on the disc already, you know, landing the raindrops. The raindrops landing between the disc and your thumb. Even some of these shorter putts become so difficult when the disc discs get a little bit moist from the rain. Right, hole 14, rain continuing to pour down here, uphill, par 3, 98 meters. Right hand backhand is actually going to shape something to the left of the trees that the drone just flew around. Pretty straightforward, there's a bit of a ceiling, so it's kind of a specific height that you have to hit. And you want this turning from left to right the whole way. And there is some out of bounds looming long into the right of this bucket. Yeah, it's a pretty simple par 3, but takes a precise shot for sure. You have to hit the height pretty much perfect to get all the way to the basket. Very often we see players going either too low and hit the ground early, or going too high and challenge that ceiling. Paul's got the perfect height, but turns it over way too much, and that's short. That's short by 20 meters. And you can't quite see it on the camera, but the rain is definitely coming down, and... You have to imagine that it affected Paul's pace right there. Yep, you can see Niklas kind of protecting that disc under his shirt. Gets a great angle on this and he's just been throwing this hole perfectly throughout the weekend. Once again, inside the circle, four meters away, going with that understable second run FD. Bradley looks at his feet, looks like he slipped there on the pad. Yeah, it was one of the sleepier tee pads we had throughout the day. You can see some mud on the tee pad. It was wet and muddy and uh, certainly big risk for slips here. As we see Dennis just getting around those middle trees, hopefully pushing forward still. Not going OB and he's within putting distance. Okay, Paul will have that for par. Nicholas 
Really good chance to pick one back up here. Yeah, and uh, I feel like Vanich Niklas as Dennis makes another great putt. And Vanich Niklas, because he can actually watch Paul make that par putt first. So a little bit of extra pressure on Paul, I believe, here. Although he makes it look very routine there. There we go. One stroke back, four to play. Very unpredictable finish to this round. And hole 15, it's short, but it's spicy. 76 meters, look how tight this first gap is. And then we had a ripping left to right off the tee. Most shots actually finish to the right of this pin, so you're left with this kind of ripping headwind straight at the out of bounds. OB is maybe, what, four meters from this pin? This is a tricky little hole. Yeah, very tricky, and the most important thing here, hit the gap. It's a very tight gap off the tee. Second most important thing, move right before those backside trees come into play. If you hit the backside trees, anything can happen. You can kick left OB, can stay right there you're probably not gonna have much of a chance for birdie we have seen Niklas play this conservative forehand just through the gap and get it into play into about 10 meters on the right side of the basket and he's there once again in the bushes this time and that's a really really difficult putt Lefty forehand for Dennis, look at this. That is beautiful. That shape makes sense. Yeah, I feel like it really suits the left hand forehand or the right hand backhand. It's just a matter of hitting the gap with, with the right hand backhand is very difficult for most right handed players. Dennis obviously able to see the gap all the way, all the way through the shot with that forehand. Let's see if Paul can do it with the backhand. No, he doesn't. And the big kick left goes OB. That's a huge swing. Wow. Big moment there. He's bogey at best. Going to be 25 meters from the pin. Bradley needed a little help there, and he gets it. Great play there to get it under the pin. And Nicholas kind of has a decision to make. I imagine he's just going to lay this up. What do you think? Yeah, interesting to see. I have no idea what he's going to do. Looks like he's actually running it. But you can see it's a strong headwind here. Air balls it. And I believe he does stay safe there. But has still some sort of a par putt left. Certainly no tap in there. You can see Niklas's disc at around seven meters. High pressure putt. This is to tie Macbeth for the lead. Wow, big moment in the round there. You can see the sun coming back out. Looks like the rain has stopped for a brief moment. Yeah, it's hard to really tell on camera how hard that wind was ripping, but I was slightly surprised to see Nicholas run that putt toward the OB into that head right to left. Yeah, but I'm sure he was uh, confident in his ability to keep that disc short enough to not go OB. And we saw the great comebacker. Pretty confident, confident looking stroke. And the game is tied with three holes to go. Couldn't really hope for much better of a finish.
Well, 16, tough part three, uphill, 92 meters. Look at all the trees you have to navigate. A lot of players have been kind of throwing this flex forehand and just hoping to get lucky through the small trees on the left side. And you can see just how close this OB creeps in around this bucket. We're tied up. Yeah, this certainly could be one of the deciding holes. It's no easy birdie by any means, especially with the elevated baskets. We see Dennis going with a common shot there, kind of towards the left side to avoid that OB on the right. And he's going to have a makeable putt from there. Niklas has been going with this flex forehand, as you said, with a pretty okay success. He already has one birdie on this hole. But this looks way off. This is way right, challenging that right side OB. And it stays safe. What a break. He gets through every tree. That was huge, Elias. Wow. That was very lucky. Almost every time somebody goes through those trees and is fading strongly to the right, they end up going OB, but not Niklas. Having a chance for birdie even from there. And Bradley with a beautiful looking forehand, but just barely pushes it too far. Paul also going with his flex here. Kind of pulls it a little bit, but there's windows and he finds it. Unreal. He's three meters from the pin. I think Nicholas is probably closer to nine meters over there. Yeah, Paul with a pretty much guaranteed birdie as Bradley makes it from outside the circle to the elevated basket. Let's take another look. The crowd is super excited. You can feel the energy, even through the video. Wow, what a great pop there. Committed putt, fist pump as it catches on the left side and drops into the bucket. Wow. Biggest putt of the day thus far. Let's run it back. Niklas certainly is a player, one for the battle. I'm sure he enjoys this tight, tight match off against Paul Macbeth going down the stretch. Just insane mental strength to make that, as Dennis also makes it from nine meters. Super casual, bangs it in the middle. All in for the birdie as well. We're knotted up at 24 under par. We have just two holes left to play. We got a pretty short walk up this hill. Tee pad of 17. It is a downhill par three, just 97 meters. One initial gap to hit. Little OB on the right side of the fairway and then a drop off behind and to the left of this pin. We've seen a lot of shots kind of come up early left. And the wind is certainly blowing. It's kind of presenting itself as a left to right off the tee, which is actually kind of helping these shots from hyzering out too much. Yep. For sure, many people are going with something slightly overstable on this hole to get that finish to the left, as we saw Dennis Go with the overstable driver forehand. Too far left, it's faded down the hill. This hole for both Niklas and Paul in this situation is just an unacceptable miss. They have to get this birdie if they want to stay competitive. Niklas looks to have thrown a great line. Although it does skip way long. I believe he's outside the circle there. That's not what he was looking for. Yeah, just a little... Too much juice on that tactic. Beautiful shape from Bradley getting it up to flat. Scooting up into the mulch there and Bradley is making a good case for a solo third place finish. 
Big moment for Paul. I believe he's got zone. Yeah, overstable zone here. Trying to hit it flat towards the right side. Hopefully get that fade at the end. A little bit low, but gonna take that forward pushing skip and he's inside the circle. Advantage Paul here since Nicholas is outside the circle and Paul is easily in. Difficult pot here. Bangs it in the middle. Incredible. Running it back outside the circle, opts to not jump it and just puts it in the pocket. He is in the moment here, back to back. Deep putts. And he puts the pressure right back on Paul. Yeah, insane mental strength from Nicholas as Dennis makes once again another great putt from the edge of the circle. And Paul. Also has to straddle out. This is no easy putt. Looks like the wind has actually died down for a bit. And gets it. Bottom left pocket. Let's take another look at this high pressure putt. Wow, we really are going to be tied heading into the final hole here at the Swedish Open. This couldn't get any more exciting. Great birdie from Bradley. He's putting together a solid round. He's at eight down. All right. It is the single hardest hole on the course, no doubt about it. Decent headwind right to left today makes this tee shot so demanding. You get it two turned, it's gonna hold your disc on that turn and you're gonna find that OB on the right side, that's that rock wall. There's that mandatory on the left side. You have to navigate to the right of, so if you hyzer too much, you're up on this hillside, you have to throw this touchy little layup to then approach this basket that's up on this hill. This only makes sense that we're tied heading into the hardest hole on the course. Yeah, and the hardest hole on the course proving its teeth. Actually, only one birdie has been taken on this hole so far throughout the day. Birdie here from any of these players would go a long way. Niklas, good looking line. Swinging back into the fairway, gets the last tree. Unbelievable, that was swinging back to perfection. Nicholas couldn't believe it. He thought he threw the perfect tee shot. I thought he threw the perfect tee shot. The angle was looking so good. It was definitely fading back to the fairway. It's the last tree, unfortunately. Dennis there, airing out on the better side to miss, which is the left. Difficult uh, hillside to contend there with, but it's not OB and still a chance for par as he's also fighting for good position here. Bradley looked like he turned it over a bit too much, but hit some of those trees and also kicks to the left side. So Paul has seen that Nicholas has gone out of bounds. There's no real way to lay up this tee shot. You still have to commit, but he's likely gonna favor the left side. Getting a little drift there. That's definitely the best tee shot he's thrown all weekend. And that's in a good position. He's just going to have a little hyzer around that mandatory. Yeah. I believe that's going to be a very difficult birdie position. But par very much in play from there. And much easier than for Nicholas, Since Nicholas still has about 120 meters back to the basket. As we see Bradley... Pitching around the corner, that's a good shot. Gonna have a pretty easy approach to the green from there. And Dennis really rallied on this back nine, shooting six under thus far after a really tough finish to his front. 
but it was a big week for him and this is the biggest shot of the day oh and he has it turned over elias no way wow it's not ob but that's not near the basket he has 35 meters going up the hill from there let's see if paul can put this a little bit closer that took that shot took a lot of pressure out of Paul. He goes inside Heiser through a tight gap and is actually a bit closer than Niklas. So big advantage Paul here having thrown one less shot, well, one less stroke on the scorecard and still being closer. Yep, great final approach for Bradley. Good showing for him this weekend. I believe that's going to cement his third place finish. Him and Luke Gay both finishing on the podium this weekend. It's got to be pretty cool for the couple. Okay. Nicholas has to try and throw this in. He's going to go forehand tactic here. Uphill into the tailwind. Only realistic chance for him to win here is to throw this in. And comes up short. So it's going to be just an easy layup for Paul. Paul is in circle too, but no reason to run it. He can just lay this up under the basket and walk away with the victory. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Paul McBeth. I don't believe he was running that one guys he was laying it up and you could see the wind just lift it up and into the chains we're gonna run it back here you wouldn't be able to tell but we did get confirmation later that he was just trying to put it under the bucket just didn't want to leave it short and the wind just carried it in and that's actually gonna be an 11 under par for Paul and that it's going to be to take the course record away from Nicholas and to take this title as well. That's his second Euro Tour title this season. Yeah, what a finish. That's such an epic way to win and hat off to Nicholas for battling even after that difficult front nine, shooting six under in eight holes on the back nine. Just finishing with a bogey, coming up short to the man himself, Paul Macbeth. I'm sure he was hungry for this victory after having a couple of close calls on the Euro Tour prior to this. Swedish Open champion, Paul Macbeth! Taking a look at the top 10 there. Bradley Williams takes third. Clay Edwards sneaks into the top five with a five under during that final round. Yakub makes a good comeback. Thomas Gilbert finds himself in the top 10 at his first event in Sweden this year. Peter Lund stays in the top 10. Well done after that tough second round and Elias, it's been an honor to work with you this week. Yeah, thank you, Nate. It was really fun and what an exciting event we had. Yeah, shout out to MDG Media for the work this weekend. And guys, make sure you subscribe to their channel for the chance to win that sick Clash Disc giveaway. And we will see you next week. Your tour stop number five, Sheleftia.